In this video we're going to think about how many zeros there are on the end of this number, 100 factorial. Factorial means you start with 1, then multiply by 2, by 3, by 4, until you get to the number we're factorialing, in this case 100. So 100 factorial is a really, really big number. And the first thing we can notice is that it does definitely end in a zero, right? Because if I think about the last number here, it's got 100 in it, it's a multiple of 100, so it will definitely end in at least two zeros, and in fact it's a multiple of lots of other uh, multiples of 10 as well, like 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 are all in here as well. So there will be quite a lot of zeros on the end of this number. Think about how to analyze this problem. We will start with a slightly smaller number. Let's think about 10 factorial, but I'm going to write out 10 factorial with its uh, prime factorizations in place, right? So I'm going to write 1 times 2 times 3, but instead of 4, I'm going to write 2 times 2, okay? And instead of uh, well, 5 is 5. Instead of 6, I'm going to write 2 times 3. Uh, for 8, we're going to have 2 times 2 times 2. Uh, for 9, that's going to be 3 times 3. And for 10, of course, that's 2 times 5. So if we think about where we get zeros arising in this number, we do get that one that comes from multiplying by 10 at the end, which is 2 times 5. But we also get 2 times 5 in other places as well. In particular here, I get a 2 times 5. So actually, 5 factorial will end in a zero because it's got 2 times 5 or 4 times 5 in it, right? And what we notice here is that there are loads and loads of 2s in the factorization of 10 factorial and in any larger number factorial, but not so many fives. So it's the fives that are rare, and they're the ones that we uh, are looking out for. In fact, we can check on the calculator here if we want to as well. We can type in uh, 10 factorial, and we can see that it ends in two zeros. Now, if you try to do 100 factorial, by the way, that will give you a math error, right? We can't do that. It's too big a number for the calculator to display. In fact, if we do 69 uh, factorial, that's the last one that it will display. But even then, it displays it in standard form, right? So if I do 70 factorial, uh, that's too big. I get a math error. Uh, but if I do 15 uh, factorial say, or even some quite smaller factorials here, it's still too big to see what the last digits are. So we can't just use the calculator to analyze this problem. Of course, you could put it into Wolfram Alpha and it will give you the full digits, uh, but that spoils the fun. If we keep going here, then think about 100 factorial, we can now see where we will get all of these zeros arising, right? We will be able to uh, take the 5, the 10, the 15, the 20, etc., that come up in the factorization of 100 factorial, and every time we get a multiple of 5, we are going to get uh, a 0 uh, added to the factorial at that point. So 100 divided by 5 is 20, and so that gives me 20 zeros uh, on the end of 100 factorial. But that's not quite the end of the story, right? Because if you think about uh, a number like 25, well, 25 actually is 5 times 5. So when I expand that in the factorization as I've done here, we will actually end up with two zeros additionally on the end of the number. I compare this five with any even number and this five with any other even number, and it will give me something with a zero on the end. So I do need to think about 25, 50, uh, 75, and 100 separately. They give me additional uh, zeros, and there's four of those. So the total number of zeros on the end of 100 factorial would be 20 plus four, which is 24. Now, armed with that, we can go on and think about 1,000 factorial or any other larger number that we want to. So for 1,000 factorial, we will get zeros every time we hit multiples of 5. So at 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on, all the way up to 1,000. 1,000 divided by 5 is 200, so there'll be 200 zeros that arise in that way. Again, we'll get an extra zero every time we hit a multiple of 25 for exactly the same reason, and 1,000 divided by 25 is 40, so there will be 40 of those. But we need to go even further, because there are times when we get more than two zeros, right? 125, that's 5 cubed, or 5 times 5 times 5. Well, every time I hit one of those, then, I'm going to get three extra zeros, because I compare each of those fives with an even number. 125, 250, all the way up to 1,000 will give us those. 1,000 divided by 125 is 8, so that gives us 8 additional zeros. And there's even one more, because we can go to one higher power, which is 625, which is 5 to the 4. In this case, we're going to get 4 additional zeros, so I need to add one extra one on here, and that gives us 249 zeros on the end of 1,000 factorial. Now, if you've understood all of that, why don't you tell me in the comments how many 
zeros, they would be on the end of 10,000 factorial. And don't forget to give me a little bit of working in there as well. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll also really like this video on another similar challenging maths problem.